What's up YouTube? It's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Now, sometimes you need information from a website that doesn't have a structured, formalized API. And when you find yourselves in that scenario, you might need to do what's called web scraping. So that's what we're gonna look at today, doing web scraping in Node using a package called Cheerio. All right, so I've got up here the page for uh, Cheerio. Before we get into that, I wanna come over to my personal site, and this is jamesqquick.com, specifically to a page called uh, Talks. So what this page represents is all of the talks that I've given at conferences in the last, um, in the last year, so since April 29, 29th of 2019. So I don't have, if someone were interested in reusing this information that's on this page, there's not a great way for them to, to get that information. I don't have an API backend where they can query all of this information. I don't have a structured way for them to get it. So this is a good use case for something called web scraping where someone could uh, get the HTML for this page. They could come through and look for certain pieces of information like the fact that each one of these talks is inside of a div with a class of talk. They could rip through that HTML, they could strip out the pieces, the information they want, like maybe this anchor link, and then maybe the title of the talk. And they could rip through all of that HTML, extract the information that they need, and then format it in any way that they want. So that's what we're gonna look at today. I'm just using my site as an example here, but you could web scrape any website out there and kind of extract information out of the HTML. Now, Cheerio is a package that uh, helps you parse HTML a lot easier. So it has uh, kind of a jQuery type syntax. If you've never used jQuery, this might be a little bit new. If you've used jQuery, this is uh, probably gonna be very similar for you. And what this does is you have the ability to load Cheerio with some sort of HTML. And what we're gonna do is query uh, this page. So just do a get request to this page, get back the HTML, and then load up the Cheerio object and assign it to dollar. This allows you to do uh, jQuery syntax, assigning it to a dollar variable. And then you can uh, get certain pieces of information out of the elements, the HTML elements inside of uh, that HTML or from that HTML. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna scroll over to, um, to VS Code here. I've got this initialized as um, as a JavaScript project. So I just ran an NPM init, not init G, but NPM init. It's gonna say this is already um, already a JavaScript project. So I did an NPM init with, uh, in, with the project initiated and with that package.json file already created, I can do an N, NPM install of Axios and then Cheerio, not and typing, but and Cheerio. And so what Axios is, is a really quick package to make HTTP requests. So we're gonna make that HTTP request to my website. And then Cheerio is the package we just kind of looked at briefly where we will um, take the HTML from, the from my website and then be able to parse through it. So uh, this is, I'm gonna be running a node file. So scraping.js is gonna be running in node. So you'll need to install node on your system if you haven't already. And then the editor that I'm using here is VS Code. So I'm gonna start with uh, importing a couple of things. I'm gonna import uh, Axios and then uh, import Cheerio as well. So require Cheerio. All right, so with those two packages uh, required or imported, now I wanna use Axios. I wanna use Axios to say get. So it's gonna make an HTTP request to my website at jamesqquick.com slash talks, all right? And Axios is, uh, the Axios git returns a promise. So I can handle that promise. I've got a video on promises if you need a refresher on what those look like or how to work with them. But basically after performing this git request, it's gonna return some sort of response. And uh, inside of the response object, there's a property called data that we can look at. So let's look at console log response.data. And I could run this file uh, with node installed by saying node scraping.js. 
And if you look, this is probably going to look a little bit confusing that you can see at the end, this thing ends with a body and an HTML tag. It's got, looks like some JavaScript in here. If we scroll up high enough, you see the beginning of an HTML file. You see some inline styles. So this is inline CSS. And then if we scroll down enough right to the right spot, we see some actual HTML in here. So what this is, uh, this data that we're looking at is actually the HTML for this page. The way that I can prove this to you is I'm going to copy this and come over to Postman. So if you've never used Postman before, you're able to make a uh, request to websites and then see the response. So if I make a request to that same URL doing a get, I can see in here, this is actually that text that we just saw. So there's a lot of stuff. There's inline styles in the head. There's some meta tags and link tags. There's HTML in here. And you'll see what we looked at earlier is that there's a div with a class of, it's a little bit small, so I apologize. Can I, nope, doesn't look like I can, can I zoom in on that? I don't know how well that's gonna work, but um, there's a div with a class of talk for each one of these talks that's listed. And uh, we can see this back in the, the, the DOM Explorer, Element Explorer again as well, where inside of here, we got a class of talk, class of talk, for each one of those talks that we've given. So what I wanna do is I wanna rip through each one of these divs. I wanna grab this href, grab the link to that actual uh, talk page. And then I want to, let's see, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, do the grab the slides one. And then I wanna get the inside of the anchor tag, get the uh, title of that talk as well. That way I can have that information and I can do whatever I want with it. So uh, with, the uh, response.data, we're going to initialize the dollar variable uh, with cheerio.load and then do it with res.data. And one of the things that we can see is we can do a dollar sign and then this is our query. So let's do a dollar sign of talk and uh, let's just do HTML and print that out. So let's do a console log of this. So what this is saying is you're gonna use Cheerio to grab, in this case, probably the first element that has a class of talk, and then just print out its HTML is what we're looking at. So let's run this. And since we're gonna be making a lot of changes and then rerunning this pretty frequently, I'm gonna use something called Nodemon. You can, do, uh, you can use Nodemon by doing npm install dash G, so global to install Nodemon. And what this will do is it will run your node file and then reload it every time you save that file. So if we do Nodemon scraping JS, we should see this is going to um, gonna show us a bunch of stuff actually, and this is a bug in my code that I need to fix. So if I look up at the beginning of this container, it's got a container uh, with a class of talk. So I'm actually gonna fix that really quick and then come back once that's fixed. All right, so I actually went out and uh, fixed the classes on my site. So this container here should only have a class of container. It shouldn't have a class of talk because that's what these are for down here. Now, this is actually a really interesting point here of when you have a website that you find that you want to do some web scraping on, don't expect that their IDs and classes and uh, structure of HTML is going to be perfect. You might have to dig to figure out how to get exactly what you want. Uh, but with that fix now, if I save this file and run this again, what I should see, it's running or starting here. I should see that it comes back and this is actually the HTML for just one of those talk objects. And if I look at, if I get reference to uh, .talk, I could do something like uh, children, children, so get the children of that element and then call the first child and then get the html for that and we should see once this comes through in a second oh if we spelled children correctly i'm sure you already saw that was wrong and i've got some auto formatting here to kind of clean this up to separate them on different lines so you can see the children of that element is um is the h2 with a class of card title so let's come back over here and let's look at one of these talks so we selected this thing, and what that really gives us is kind of the HTML starting here. So when I look at children, it's gonna grab the H2 that's inside of it. So uh, instead of 
doing that, we actually want to grab, well, let's grab this title first. So for, for this, we're getting a reference to uh, the H2 uh, card title, blah, blah, blah. We can actually grab, I just want this title here. We can actually grab the text of that. So it should just give us, sorry about that. It should just give us the title of the talk. So there we go. So now we have access to that title. Okay, so now if we wanted to update this to get the anchor from uh, basically the second anchor here, let's go back and look the second anchor and we want the href attribute. Uh, what we could do is we could do uh, look for all children that have uh, that are an anchor tag and then get the last one of those that's a child of the div. So we look at this, it's showing the text here. What's inside of that? What we actually want is the attribute of hrefs let's see if that's going to give us what we want uh that doesn't look ex oh yeah actually that is right so this is the link the OneDrive link to get to uh those slides so we want to do two things well three we want to iterate through each one of the talks then we want to get this um the title of the talk that's inside of here and then we also want to get the link to the slide so those are the two things we want to aggregate from each one of these talks so i'm going to uh initialize a variable, an object, const, I don't know why it didn't indent, const talks equals uh, new object. So we're gonna start with that. Then we're gonna load in our data from the from Axios, we'll get that data. Now we wanna go through, iterate through each one of the uh, talks. So let's do this. Let's actually, we can just comment this out for now. And we'll start by doing that same thing. So let's get a reference to uh, talks, the class or everything with a class of talk, not talks. And we wanna call something called each. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give us a reference to each uh, index and uh, each element and then its index. So each uh, element that matches with the class of talk will get it as well as the index. So we can show in here that we can iterate through each one and we'll get a reference to each element like this. And then we could just call um, HTML or let's just call text on that. So let's look at what that does. It should show us um, each one of these. So this is like, all, this is all the text that's inside of a given talk. If we then wanted uh, to get the first anchor tag, children text, this, if we type it correctly, should give us the title, not quite. So we want to get the first element out of the children and then the text. Let's see if that, all right. So this is getting us each of the titles. So what I want to do is let's assign that to a variable called title. Let's get rid of that extra frenzy or extra, yeah, frenzy there. And we'll add this talks. Um, and actually this should be an array, not an object. So we'll start off with an empty array and we'll just say talks of index equals talks at index equals, and we're going to create an object that will have title and title. Since we're doing ES6, we don't need to explicitly say the key and the value are both title. We could just say uh, title there. All right. And then also want to get the anchor. Uh, or the link to the uh, slide. So let's call the slides link and we'll do our jQuery selector here with element again and we'll do children and we're specifically looking for anchor tag children. And then in this case, we wanna call last and then the attribute of href. And let's log that out to see if it works. And then we'll go back and make sure that that makes sense what we're doing there. Let's log that out. We should see each anchor tag. Cool. So what we're doing is we're getting all the children. So if we look inside of here, there's two anchor tag children in talk. There's this one and there's this one. And we'll take the last one of those, which will be the uh, slides link. So this one down here. And then we're getting the href attribute from that anchor tag. So this href attribute is actually the link that we're looking for. Uh, of the slides to the slides. So uh, let's get rid of this log. Let's then add the property of slides link. All right. And then after we get done iterating through that, we'll log out the uh, talks array. And let's get rid of these unnecessary comments. 
So what we're expecting here is we'll have an array of objects. Each object will have a title property and a slides link property. Let's say that and let's log it out. And it looks like we've got that pretty good. Now, the one thing we might want to add is the description. And so the description is in, let's see, the P tag here. So if we wanted a description, I'm just going to start with this code to start out with. And let's get a new element. Let's make sure that's indented correctly. And these two are as well. So let's call this description. And we want uh, children with a P tag and then the last P tag. So if we look in here, the last P tag is going to be the description. So that looks good. And, uh, and actually this is a preview description, so it's a bridge, but whatever. So we'll do children of P grab the last and then grab probably text. Let's see if that looks right. Not text G, but text. Let's log out that description. Let's see it print. I don't think it'll be up here. So here's the descriptions. And now we can add this description to our object. Let's get rid of the extra log. And now let's print out. And we should have an object for each one of the talks with title, slides, link, and description. So uh, again, this is solving the scenario of maybe I wanted to use some information from any site, in this case, the talks site on my James Q Quick page. I uh, want to get that information and maybe I want to do something with it. Maybe I want to display it somewhere else on another website or always find the latest article and share that somewhere or something like that. I don't have an API. There's no way for someone to formally uh, call in and get structured data back. So you jump to what's called web scraping where you literally uh, request all the HTML like this, like you see here. And then you use something like Cheerio to, let me move this down a bit use something like Cheerio to parse through that HTML to load that Cheerio object. And then you get this jQuery syntax to be able to select the specific things that you want. So with Cheerio, we're able to uh, iterate through each element with a div or excuse me, a class of talk. We can get the title by looking at the text of that first um, anchor tag. So that's going to be the H2 that's inside of that anchor tag. Then we could get the slides link by looking at all the children that are anchor tags, grabbing the last one and getting the attribute of href. Then also get the description by looking at all of the p tag children, get the last one of those and then getting the text and then taking all those properties and adding them to an object. So I have an array of objects of title, slides, link and description, which is super, super cool. Now I want to leave you guys with uh, the link to the docs here. So cheerio.js.org had this up earlier. There's tons of stuff in here. This took me a little bit to get comfortable with. A lot of what you'll use is the children function. So which is, let's see here. So uh, obviously use this a lot. You'll also see maybe the attribute here. So this is what we used as well. Then you can see the text uh, function used there and the HTML function used uh, throughout a bunch of the examples as well. So you can take this website, you can scroll through the documentation, you can take any other website that's out there just to kind of practice to see if you can get some information. You have to go in and look at how the DOM elements are structured, look for key class names and things like that. And then you can be off and running doing whatever you want with that data. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you go with the web scraping route, understand that if that website changes its HTML, that might mess up the way that uh, you're parsing through that data. So for example, in one of these talks, if I moved, if I added a third anchor tag to something else, then the slides link is no longer the last anchor tag. So you might have to periodically kind of check to see if your data still looks correct. But in general, you have the ability to take information from H from an HTML page, scrape it, and then do whatever you want with it. So that's going to wrap up this video talking about web scraping in Node using a package called Cheerio. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had fun with this. I kind of had fun uh, working through this as well. So thank you for checking out the video, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.